Star Wars Attack of the Clones. This is episode two of the prequels, the infamous prequels. And I have said this for years. And even though I've been plenty disappointed by many of the Disney Star Wars films that have come out recently, I still go on record at saying that Attack of the Clones is the worst Star Wars movie ever. Just from a writing standpoint, a directing standpoint, an acting standpoint, and a complete waste of some of the most iconic characters. This is set 10 years after The Phantom Menace, which only makes me wonder even more why was The Phantom Menace taking place during the time period that it took place? Why was Anakin as young as he was in The Phantom Menace? Why was he nine years old? Why? Why? If we're just going to skip ahead and jump ahead 10 years, if we're going to meet him with a new actor at 19 here, wouldn't it have just made sense to have Hayden Christensen or anyone cast as this role and played him in the previous film? I don't get it. Because in that way, not only would a younger Anakin at a teenage age make more sense to meet him, similar to when we met Luke Skywalker in A New Hope, but also he would be the same age as Padme, his future love interest. It just, it does not make any sense. Our first scene with Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker, we instantly can tell right off the bat that these two don't like each other. <laughs> that Anakin is a whiny brat that just talks back, doesn't listen, is is in over his head, and doesn't like taking direction. And I get that that's their dynamic. I get that even in the Clone Wars animated show, they've built that reputation between the two of them. But not once throughout this film or the next film do I get a sense that these two are like brothers. Even though they say that constantly in the dialogue, even though we're supposed to feel like they're close, I never once feel like they're close. I never once feel like, oh man, these two really grew together. Whether it's Obi-Wan as a father figure or an older brother figure, I just don't get that between them and it sucks it sucks because if they did establish in this movie especially that these two were close and if i bought it then that would only make the future downturn of anakin that much more sad so these two get tasked to protect senator padme because someone's tried to kill her which mind you rose byrne is in this movie She's like in the cabinet of Padme. How random. I swear, these Star Wars prequel films have some of the best actors who maybe they weren't well known at the time, but so many of them just in the background. The first scene that Anakin gets reintroduced to Padme, you guessed it, it's creepy as hell. Anakin is just all over this woman talking about how beautiful she is, talking about how much he can't wait to spend more time with her and and reconnect. And even though Padme mentions that, oh, wow, little Annie, you know, I remember you. And clearly when she looks at him, her first thought is, yeah, you were the little boy that I interacted with last way around. It's so awkward to have his response be, I want to fuck you. <laughs> That's basically what he's saying. I know George Lucas notoriously does not direct characters well or love interests, love stories. He doesn't write them well. I've heard Harrison Ford numerous times talk about how bad the dialogue of Han and Leia were in the original trilogy and how much he had to ad-lib it to make it feel natural. Now you're dealing with actors, especially uh, Hayden Christensen, who is very young, who's 
obviously a huge fan. I've heard him talk about how much of a big deal this was for him to be in this movie. So, look, there was a time where I would have crapped all over Hayden Christensen. I would have shitted all over this guy and said how much he sucks, how much he should have never been cast in this role, how much he ruined or damn near ruined the Darth Vader character. And believe me, there are plenty of people who have said this. There are plenty of people who still probably feel this way about Hayden Christensen being cast as Anakin. There's rumors that Leonardo DiCaprio was up for this role and Lucas passed on him, which my God, imagine DiCaprio playing a role like this but even if DiCaprio was here he still has to read this script he still has to perform this dialogue this awful and terrible dialogue I don't think anybody could have looked good doing this I don't think anybody could have made themselves more believable even Sam Jackson as Mace Windu seems bored and seems like he doesn't really know what he's doing <laughs> If you can make Sam Jackson look boring, then I think your script has some issues. So let's talk about the CGI because, yes, Phantom Menace has a lot of CGI that doesn't hold up. But I think Attack of the Clones has the worst CGI because it's even more reliant on CGI. Especially us spending so much time on planets like Coruscant and... I like the idea of Coruscant. I like that it's the higher end of, of the class. Very cool concept. Very cool idea. But 2002 was not the year to do something like this. We needed to wait. This needed to wait. We could have gotten more practical. Even Blade Runner from the 80s still holds up with with how futuristic and how cool that city looked. They, they should have gone more practical. They should have. I'm not saying you couldn't have CGI here. I'm not saying you couldn't have had a lot of this stuff enhanced with CGI. But this isn't the time to do it. So Obi-Wan has to go out and look for the bounty hunter. The one that killed the other bounty hunter that tried to kill Padme. And so while he's doing that, you see him go to this one diner, which... I don't hate the idea that there are diners in space or that there's an alien diner, kind of like an alien bar with the cantina, right? Like, I like the idea that aliens have many things that feel and look like things on Earth or that are comparable. But again, it's the CGI. It's the terrible CGI of the aliens that Ewan McGregor, poor Ewan McGregor, has to work with, has to pretend like he's actually talking to somebody right there in front of him. Anakin, though, he gets tasked to escort Padme back to Naboo. And oh man, every time the story stops and cuts to Anakin and Padme, and they're talking to each other, Anakin tells Padme how much he's in love with her and how much he's been thinking about her every day for 10 years. Lucas really believes that this is sweet. George Lucas really wrote this dialogue and thought, wow, people are going to buy this romance, buy this relationship, buy everything about them. And goddamn, this movie makes me think that Natalie Portman is a bad actress. And I know that she's not, you know, V for Vendetta, Black Swan, almost any other movie that you can think of, Natalie Portman is amazing in. But these movies ain't it. And she's trying, bless her heart, she's trying to look flattered. She's trying to smile. She's trying to look like she's interested in this young kid. But then you remember, holy crap, what's their age difference? Was she like five, six, seven years older than him? And I'm not saying in general you can't date a woman that much older than you. But when she met him at nine, this does not work. This is just weird. Oh, and how about the scene when Anakin tells her how much she... Oh, yeah. And how about the scene when Anakin tells Padme how much he hates sand? How much it's annoying, it gets everywhere, and oh, he just hates, hates, and hates sand. And look, I hate sand too. So I'm right there with you, dude. 
I hate sand. It's annoying. It's one of the main reasons why I hate going to the beach because you know that you're going to walk away with sand and areas and in crevices that you just need to work extra hard to wash out. But maybe it's the performance. Maybe it's the way this scene is directed. And Hayden, poor Hayden, cannot deliver this well enough for me to care. I know that I've seen other YouTube channels like Star Wars Theory and people talk about the meaning of what Hayden is talking about. How he comes from a planet that's covered in sand. He's been a slave. Uh, you know, you know, Tatooine has a lot of bad memories for him. So he equates sand with his his upbringing, his childhood, and and that's it's a great idea. Again, it's execution. It's the way it's performed. It's the way it's directed. This scene could have been heartbreaking to listen to Hayden do, and it just does not come across. Speaking of Anakin, he finds out that his mom was sold to another person so he goes to look for her and he comes to find out that she has been just brutally tortured and beaten up by the Tuscans and and she dies she dies in his arms another situation where we're supposed to feel bad and I only feel bad a little bit. You know, when you think about what this woman probably went through for the last 10 years and how much her life probably sucked. Yeah, it was probably brutal. But Anakin getting angry, jumping closer and closer towards the dark side, you see him massacre the tribe. He kills a whole tribe of Tuscans, kids as well, although we don't really get to see a lot of it. And then you cut to Anakin telling Padme this. He tells Padme that he killed a bunch of Tuscan kids and he's killed women. And Padme's reaction, Natalie Portman's reaction, her not being scared or unnerved or any normal reaction that you should have after something like that happens, it's weird. <laughs> No one acts like a human. No one acts like the way that they should. She's just like, oh, it's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, sure. And and then they kiss. So great. Anakin killing a bunch of Tuscan kids turns Padme on. Obi-Wan comes into contact with Jango Fett. He finds out that they are making clone troopers, which I never liked the idea of clone troopers. Again, I know the Clone Wars, the animated shows, did a lot with the clone troopers and actually made them interesting and gave them all personalities and had them all go off and do their own adventures. And that's great. And that's cool and all. But when you're just watching the movies, this seems very random. This seems very unnecessary. The fact that clone troopers are here. So Obi-Wan realizes that Jango Fett is the bounty hunter he's looking for. They have a pretty cool fight that doesn't last too long. And then we get introduced to Count Dooku. <laughs> what a great name for a villain. Count Dooku. This is why Darth Maul was killed off at the end of Phantom Menace, was to bring in Count Dooku. Why couldn't this have just been Maul, if you ask me? But it is played by Christopher Lee, so he's a great actor. He's, boy, is he trying to make this work. You find out that Count Dooku is the one who is leading the charge. He tries to warn them that the Sith, Darth Sidious, is behind all of this, and the Jedi sort of get spooked and try to realize what's going on. You have Obi-Wan and later on, and again, and Padme get taken captured and they have to fight in this combat. And, and that's where we get even more giant CGI creatures. Yay. Awesome. Giant CGI creatures. If only this looked more real. If only this looked like, oh, the characters are actually in danger here, but they're not. I will say that the image of hundreds of Jedis showing up with their lightsabers and taking out these creatures, it's cool in theory. It's cool in idea. But again, I don't know most of these Jedis. The movies haven't taken any time or effort to make these characters noticeable 
to have us recognize any of them like oh hey that jedi is the one that we saw earlier or that's the jedi that anakin interacted with in the last movie no we don't know any of these jedis mace windu ends up killing Jango Fett, he cuts his head off, which was a pretty badass and gnarly moment, especially to see a Jedi almost go for the kill. This is why I wanted more characterization of Mace Windu, because this seems like it comes out of nowhere, or this seems like a pretty brutal moment for a Jedi to do, and if we had spent more time with Mace, if we understood maybe why he was far more aggressive than Yoda and Obi-Wan and any other Jedi, this would be like a hell yeah, badass moment. You get young baby Boba Fett who picks up the head of his father, or maybe it's just the helmet. I don't know. But either way, <laughs> it's supposed to set up the future of Boba Fett, who, let's be real, when I first saw this film, Boba Fett meant nothing to me. Sam Jackson having a purple lightsaber, though, is very badass. And the fact that he demanded to George Lucas, I'm going to have a purple lightsaber, even though that's not a part of the lore or that was never originally intended to be a thing. Lucas said, sure. If only Sam Jackson fought harder for better dialogue or fought harder for him to ad lib so that we can get more motherfuckers in a Star Wars film. Having R2-D2 and C-3PO in the prequels, I'm of two minds about this. There is a part of me that thinks... Look, they're droids, they don't age, they can essentially be around in any time period in the Star Wars films. They can be some of the only legacy characters that pop up in prequels and sequels or films that are set years and years after the fact. So there's a part of me that likes it, there's a part of me that's okay with it, it's the familiarity, it's what connects all of the movies, but... I don't think they're used well. You know, I, they're here because it's it's a kid's film and they're supposed to be the comic relief, especially C-3PO, but it comes off more as annoying. Oh yeah, now all of a sudden R2-D2 can fly? He can fly now? So we get a battle between Count Dooku and Obi-Wan and Anakin. It's, it's, it's a similar three-way fight like in the last movie, but not nearly as cool, not nearly as badass, not nearly as memorable. The score is not even that great either. Anakin gets his hand cut off because I guess the rule of Star Wars is that every second film, a character has to get their limb cut off, specifically their hand. So now Anakin lost his hand, and it looks like they're about to lose, until, look who shows up! Yoda! <laughs> CGI Yoda, mind you, because originally in Phantom Menace, uh, Yoda, they did use a puppet, you know, but then they remade him CGI for the remastered cut, which is, oh yeah, great, more CGI. This film is the first film where they shot Yoda as CGI, and I never liked CGI Yoda. It always, again, it's just more CGI that doesn't look as good. But because we have something else to compare CGI Yoda to, because we can compare CGI Yoda to Puppet Yoda in the original trilogy, we know what looks better. We know what we prefer more. But also, Yoda bouncing around, jumping up, flipping over to fight Dooku. There's a part of me that does think it's funny. There's a part of me that does think it's goofy as all hell. But because this film is so devoid of anything cool, anything that I like, anything that I think is worth talking about, I'll take Yoda jumping around and and flipping around and being a badass, seemingly for the first time we get to see Yoda being a badass with a lightsaber, I will take that over anything else that's in this movie because why not? At the end of this film... Anakin ends up marrying Padme and he does this behind everyone's back because the Jedi are not allowed to have a love interest and not allowed to have a relationship and not allowed to fall in love. So this is weird though because how do they expect nobody to find this out? How do they expect this to not go anywhere? I don't know. It, it was a weird choice and the fact that the most interesting part of this story or this time period are the clone troopers and and the clone wars taking place we don't get to see any of it 
The Clone Wars happen completely off screen and they end up happening in the animated show. But why isn't this movie about the Clone Wars? They mentioned the Clone Wars in the original trilogy. They mentioned the Clone Wars a bunch of times, but we don't get to see it? <laughs> if it wasn't for the cartoon, we never would have seen anything regarding the Clone Wars. God damn. And think of how many people are just watching these films and have not seen the Clone Wars show. And it is. It's awkward. It's weird that you would skip that time period completely. I don't know. To me, it doesn't make sense. So, guys, <laughs> let me know in the comments below what do you think of Attack of the Clones? What do you think of it? Is there anyone out there that actually enjoys this movie? Because, man, I'd love to know why. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later!